scientists at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, or KEMRI, are studying the reasons behind the current worrying surge in numbers. And as Dorcas Wangira reports, KEMRI scientists gave Citizen a demonstration of genomic sequencing and tells us why it's extremely important for the country to invest in it if Kenya is to win the war against COVID-19. As scientists fight to further understand COVID-19 with breakthroughs such as vaccines, the virus is also fighting back, and this has primarily been through mutation as it tries to survive. Besides the original founder virus detected in Wuhan, China, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta variants are more transmissible, causing more severe disease, and they are pushing scientists to find more answers. The Lambda variant detected in 30 countries is now of interest. These mutations that happen can only be detected if we do genome sequencing. You use chemicals to try to cut in pieces the genome or the genetic makeup of a microorganism. We are looking how do these genes present? How does the gene look like? There's a standard whereby we know that the genes should present a genome is all of a living thing's genetic material. In most living things, it is made up of a chemical called DNA. One person's genome is different from that of every other person on Earth. At the Camry headquarters in Nairobi, Dr. Damaris Matoke Muhia, a molecular biologist, demonstrates just how this intricate process works. For COVID-19 sequencing to begin, Positive samples are received and brought in. Then the library preparation is necessary, where the samples are labeled. High quality fragments are selected, then they are loaded into the flow cells. Each flow cell can take in multiple samples, depending on the type of sequencer machine. Then the flow cells are loaded in the machine. The process of washing takes place and the actual sequencing is run. And depending on the equipment I'm using, it could take a day or two. Library prep takes a while, but when you have uh, sufficient human resource, you can take a two to three days to, prep, to do the library prep. And this can take also, it can run for 48 hours and you have your results. And you make them linear and you start reading them from left to right, like you would read a textbook. And that machine has the capacity to do that. And that's why it's called a sequencer. After I've gotten my sequences, the thing is that now I subject these sequences to what we call at the national uh, databases. They are national global or global databases that already have sequences of other COVID variants that we have. But it is what these messages mean or what they translate to that scientists have to understand. We do continuous surveillance of new samples that we receive so that we can be able to detect those mutations when they occur almost in real time. And that informs us a lot about, one, how far has this spread? We can test a number of people and say, yes, we have 100 people who are positive. But that is not good enough. We need to know, yes, they are positive, but they are positive of what? So once we capture the variants very fast like this, we are able to tell that actually this one you need to move with speed and put some containment measures. Dr. Matuko further adds that genomic sequencing can also help advise treatment regimes for different variants, as well as modify testing kits for variants that are likely to escape detection and give false negatives. Viruses are unstable and they are known to mutate or to change over time for survival. And that is why understanding their genetic makeup is very important. It would be ideal if every sample that tested positive for COVID-19 was sequenced. However, this is a very expensive and time-consuming process. An item like a MISEC, just the instrument itself, cost about 30 million. 
Kenya, Kenya shillings, similar to the Oxford uh, nanopore sequencer. It would cost between 30 to 50 US dollars to sequence each positive sample. The genomic sequencing is also carried out at other sites in Kemri Kilifi and Kemri Kisumu, as well as other private labs. The Delta variant, according to the Ministry of Health, is becoming dominant in the country, accounting for the surge of cases witnessed previously in the Lake region and now in Nairobi and Mombasa. However, not even more than 3,000 samples out of slightly more than 200,000 positive cases have been sequenced, showing just how genomic data is not easy to generate. The more the virus spreads, the more the variants appear. It is important for Kenya to heavily invest in this. Dorka Swangira, Citizen TV, Nairobi.